Hello, this is Edith Neumeyer, and I am the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. Well, if you want to find my book, it is, it can be found on Amazon, and um, I hope you will read it. Very interesting book. It challenges the traditional view on um, Genesis 1 and the creation of um, the man and the woman. The first man and the first woman. So, but today I'm going to talk about something different. I want to uh, build on what I, uh, my last video. Uh, I mentioned Walter Feith or Veith, however you want to pronounce, however you want to pronounce it. And he was mentioning a Jesuit. Uh, I think he was a professor. He was teaching at a um, Jesuit academy or university in Spain in the 1500s. And he wrote a book in 1590 um, as an attempt um, to shut down the Reformation. Uh, we know that Luther and the other reformers, they preached that the Pope or the papacy was the Antichrist. And so, of course, the Pope wanted uh, his theologians to come up with a different story. Well, and this story is really strange. Now, the guy's name is Francisco Ribera. Francisco Ribera, R-I-B-E-R-A, Ribera. And again, he is a monk, a Spanish monk, Jesuit theologian. Um, in 1537 to 1591. And it's very interesting because he wrote a commentary on Revelations. So, he came up with this idea about the Antichrist, which I always thought was really strange because I really couldn't find um, this in, in the Bible. Again, you know, I the only thing that I see is uh, John mentioning Antichrist in his letters. But when you read John's letters, there is no, no such thing as this one Antichrist. So, and he doesn't mention him in revelations which he should have done but he didn't also uh, paul never mentions the antichrist so he made up this word antichrist as one ruler end time ruler and he says that this individual will persecute and blaspheme the saints of god hmm. who persecuted and blasphemed the saints of god i just watched uh, a video because this uh, Francisco Rivera, Rivera, lots of people have done videos, but you have to be extremely careful. Okay, Be very careful and do your own research because there's already anti or, or uh, people out there that are actually now saying everything this Francisco Rivera said is uh, incorrect. Like for instance, the rapture. Uh, some people say that he came up with the, the pre-rapture idea, and I haven't looked into that. But I'm just saying be extremely careful. But this is what he believed. There's an Antichrist. There was very big on this Antichrist who will persecute and blaspheme this, the, the saints of God. Remember, the Pope did that. Okay? Remember, the Pope did that. So they had to find, actually... Um, a scapegoat uh, rebuild the temple in Jerusalem isn't that interesting that's what he preached that's what he wrote in his book on Revelation that there is going to be a temple in Jerusalem doesn't exist in the Bible um, he will abolish the Christian religion I really question that I'm talking about maybe he will abolish 
the true believers, but never the Christian religion. I think the Christian religion will continue, um, especially under Catholicism, they will continue to be called Christian. Um, deny Jesus Christ, be received by the Jews, and that's possible um, because, again, the Jews are still waiting for their Messiah. Destroy Rome. Well, you know, there is, I believe, something um, in Revelation that says that Rome will be destroyed. Um, you know, uh, in reference to actually the beast out of the sea. Okay, the beast and the whore will be destroyed and burned. So, yeah, that's very possible. So it's not all wrong. Here, This is the right one. Because they know it's coming, so they're saying it ahead of time. Uh, be received by the Jews. Well, that's about the same um, as, um, what else? Pretend to be God. Yeah. Kill the two witnesses of God and conquer the world. Okay. So these are the things. So he had this idea also that... Um, the Antichrist will rule three and a half years, um, which I don't know. Uh, I, of course, I don't believe in this concept of this Antichrist. I believe it's the, the man of perdition or this man of lawlessness, which is a system, not one man. And, you know, this whole idea also about the tribulation. When you hear things like the words like tribulation, and I haven't done the study on that one, that could be also part of this whole um, confusion that um, the reformers were put under, um, because the reformers knew quite well what happened, and um, so this guy, this Francisco Rivera. Uh, Ribera um, already wrote this book in 1500, in the 1500s, 1590. And that became really the standard for all these end time, um, I'll call them theologies. Okay. And if it's not found in the Bible, then you can think, uh oh, it goes back to some place. Like, for instance, of course, the Antichrist. I mentioned another one, the tribulation. I don't find that word anywhere um, in Revelations or in the Bible. The Bible speaks about the wrath of God or Jacob's trouble, but it doesn't talk about the great tribulation. That is another um, made up idea. Also, how long this great tribulation is, is made up. We don't know exactly how many um, years or days the, the wrath of God uh, will be. You know, sometimes uh, we go by Daniel's 70th week and they say, oh, there is actually still seven weeks to be fulfilled for the Jews. And so they kind of... Um, bring back these puzzle pieces. But it does not mean um, that it has to be seven weeks. Uh, I believe there's already three and a half years fulfilled by Jesus. And and also this what this Rivera did is in a in Revelation it talks about I need to say that too these time things, you know, the numbers that we find in Revelations. It says, um, it talks about 1260 days and 42 months. And he actually took those literal. He didn't take them in this, in the concept of the Bible, because in the concept of the Bible, it would be actually years, not, um, not days. Okay, if we look at um, Numbers 14.34 and Ezekiel 4.6, um, then 
it would be actually years and not days. So he took those wrong as well. So if we go by the real numbers, um, it would look extremely different. So this guy most likely, well, we know that. Uh, I have said already that I, um, according to my research, this beast out of the sea is a system that has been around a long time, okay? So uh, I can do a video on that, but I, I'm not going to get into details today. And this beast out of the sea is what people call the Antichrist, okay? What um, I would maybe say is the Antichrist. Uh, even though I think we need to be careful because when we talk about Antichrist, we talk about this specific concept that uh, this Ribera uh, monk, no, whatever he was, theologian, came up with. And of course, that idea is wrong, that this is one man at the end of everything. So keep doing some studies on this. Again, be careful about these concepts. Um, I'm now showing very clearly that these concepts are made up. And unless you can read it in the Bible, it doesn't exist. And it is a counter attack by the Jesuits, by the papacy, because we know the Jesuits are an institution by the Vatican, Vatican to bring down the Reformation. And it has already been uh, pretty successful. And so, but what they're doing is they're infiltrating the churches and they are, again, confusing and changing the theology, the reformed theology. This Walter Feith, and I hope or Weith, uh, Weith, um talked about the uh, theology, the replacement theology and all these new theologies that kind of came up in um, recent years. And he reminded us about the reformed theology, that it's very, very different. There's no replacement that humankind was always saved the same way from the beginning. And I have said that in many of my videos. There is no difference between Gentiles and Jews. We are all being saved the same way. During the Jewish time, which I call the Jewish time, okay, as some people call it dispensation. But again, when I you talk, and he, he mentioned dispensationalism. When you talk about dispensationalism, it's very, very, um, then you get into a theology and you're stuck in a, a definition. And I really don't want to do that. So during the, and Jesus said during the time of the Gentiles, that's what Jesus used. And so we should use that too. So during the time of the Jews, which is from Abraham to Jesus, the Jews were in charge of bringing the good news, the message to the world. That was their job, okay? To tell the world about God. And the way people were saved is through becoming um, part of Israel. That's the way it is, okay? Through the uh, system and that Moses established. Okay, remember that was only an interim system until the real thing, until Messiah came. Then after Messiah came, we are now in the time of the Gentiles. And the time of the Gentiles is when the Gentiles are mainly preaching the gospel. I'm not saying the Jews cannot preach the gospel, that's not what I'm saying. But the gospel was mainly in the hands of the Gentiles. And so they have been preaching the good news to the world. 
Okay. So that is um, the way it is. It's not like uh, God is replacing anything. The message is always the same. Only the Messiah is the Savior. God is the same Savior. Nobody else. And so the Gentiles and the Jews were always part of God's plan. All of them together. God had no interest in just uh, saving one group. Okay. He was always interested in, in saving all of mankind. Because that's all of his children, the whole world are all humankind are their uh, his children. Okay, he just used different groups in order to reach his people. And so I, we need to be careful about these theolo theological um, constructs. Okay, and we have to get to the bottom of it. Um, again, this whole thing about what we're having today that people believe, Christians believe, that the temple has to be rebuilt, that the Jews need to be back in their uh, country, that, um, that God has chosen Israel um, as the, the true um, people. This is all coming out as you saw out of this Francisco Rivera, Rivera's um, theology. I mean, you saw it right there. Um, rebuilding the temple in Jerusalem. Okay. And she was actually following, supposedly following this Antichrist. And so what are they doing? They are right now planning and maneuvering to bring about exactly what this theology, this Catholic or Jesuit theology said, okay? The Pope is behind the second temple. Now, if this, oh, um, the third temple. Now, if the third temple ever going to be, be rebuilt, it will be controlled by the Pope, no doubt, okay? Now, I don't know if it will ever be rebuilt. I have no idea, okay? It is really not biblical. Again, they mentioned this Revelations um, 11, where John was instructed to measure the temple of God. But again, who or what is this temple of God? Now, Paul understood things correctly. And if you read his letters, you know that Paul believed, I mean, Paul, John, sorry, John's letters. Um, John knew um, what the temple of God is today. When John wrote Revelations, the temple was destroyed. There was no second temple anymore. And John knew that God is building the second, the third temple. I'm sorry, I'm just confused about this third, fourth, whatever temple. So he knew that God was building his temple. And he knew that the temple of God was the church. So when God instructed him to measure the temple, there could be only two ways to measure the temple of God. And that was the measuring the temple, either the temple that existed on this in this world, the church, or the temple in heaven. Because John mentions several times the temple in heaven. And later on, I think he said the temple in heaven, the door was open. Okay, so there is a temple in heaven. And it is possible that John was asked to measure that temple, the temple in heaven, not the temple, the third temple. Okay, people um, get confused. There's nothing saying um, that the temple, no place in the Bible do we read that the temple is going to be rebuilt. Why? Because the temple, the true temple of God, is the church right now. 
it's not a building, not a, a physical building. And if that temple is being rebuilt, it will be wrong. It will be an abomination. I know I have said that so many times. But all these false teachings go back to this Ribera. Um, it's, uh, it's just amazing. So the so I believe that the um, the Vatican, the papacy, will use the Jews at the end. Okay, this guy right here. I mean, how many times he say that the the Jews will fall fall for the for the Antichrist? Well, that's because I really believe that the Jews will be used, and matter of fact, they're already being used by the Vatican. I'm saying not all of the Jews, of course. I'm saying the, um, Israel, the state of Israel, the government um, is being used by Vatican right now. There's just a no doubt in my mind. Um, you can do research on that, and I know people will uh, just, some people will just go crazy about this. But, you know, do, you, do your research. There's, there's a lot of information out there um, in, in what way the Vatican is involved in the affairs of this world. Many times the Vatican is hiding his affairs and they're using um, institutions to hide their own identity. And I've mentioned that in my last video as well. And, but... It is all the Vatican that is pulling the strings. Um, they have been pulling the strings, you know, from the beginning, from 316, uh, when Constantine established the Roman Catholic Church. They have been pulling the strings, okay? They have been part of pulling the strings. Maybe at the beginning they were not because they were under Constantine, and Constantine was, of course, pulling all the strings and all the emperors after Constantine were pulling the strings string um, um, of the the leaders of the Roman Catholic Church but then after the Roman Empire fell uh, eventually the Roman Catholic Church kept continuing to influence politics in Europe oh Europe how about politics in the world when when Spain conquered the new world the Americas Americas the church was there okay the church was there and I believe they were even Jesuit monks went along to um, force the natives into accepting the Catholic religion. So yeah, they were there. They took over the whole world. Um, and again, these 1,200 and some years, that's something that I believe people have already researched, like Walter White. Or White. Um, I think he did a great job on that. And, I don't know, but I think he comes pretty close to, to um, you know, reality. Um, again, I'm going to finish up today because I just wanted to get that out. Um, this is important. I will continue to do more research on this uh, Francisco Rivera. And there's another one, Cardinal Robert Bellarmine. Oh, no, Bellarmine, because he was, uh, he was Italian. Be Beyamine, Beyamine. Um, he also picked up on this Ribera um, and just maybe a hundred years later and continued to uh, develop this idea about the end times Antichrist. So do your own research. There's some videos on YouTube that I want to watch that... Um, talk about this Francisco Rivera. Again, be careful, okay? Be careful because 
again, I also believe that, uh, of course, the Vatican already knows that people know about this Ribera. And so, of course, there's going to be a counterattack. And I know that they have already used probably people to um, now attack even more things, okay, than just, um, you know, the fact that, you know, the ref reformers knew about the Pope being the Antichrist. So now they are attacking, you know, the rapture. Um, and I have heard that, that there's lots of people attacking the rapture. They Some even deny the rapture. Some say, no, the rapture happens at the end. Um, if you do a study on the rapture and, and, and really read everything about the rapture and let the Holy Spirit guide you about the rapture, then it becomes very obvious that the rapture is a pre-wrath concept, pre-wrath. I'm not talking about the tribulation. I'm talking about the wrath of God, okay? And look at Revelation when the wrath of God starts. The whole book of Revelation is not the wrath of God. And in fact, there, there's a small portion. The wrath of God is a small portion. And that could be maybe traced back to this uh, Ribera as well. But the way we really look at Revelation is just really bad. It's it's all messed up thinking that, you know, from, I don't know when, um, right after the letters to the church, people believe that um, the tribulation starts. See, again, this concept tribulation and this concept is created someplace. And then once we have this false concept, people just go crazy. Um, they, they just misinterpret everything. So we have to get the really clear understanding that it is not really the tribulation, but it's the wrath of God. And then look, when does the wrath of God start? Okay. So there is so many false doctrines that are, that are traceable back to this Ribera. So do some studies on that. And um, I will do the same thing. And I will talk more about this subject in my next video.